How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today we're going to be doing something to my cheap Lamborghini that's going to make it more economical, more environmentally friendly, and more fuel efficient. Oh, also way more fun. <laughs> that was 150 miles an hour. <laughs> So if you guys are new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy it. Today is gonna be a fun day because I've been wanting to do one modification more than anything since I got this car. More than the exhaust, more than the paint job. The mod I'm talking about is to change this from an all-wheel drive car to a rear-wheel drive car. Now in a lot of cars, and even Lamborghinis like my Gallardo, changing it to rear-wheel drive just means taking out the drive shaft and just deleting a bunch of stuff. On this car, it's not that easy. It's not exactly the hardest thing in the world, but there are some other steps involved. And before I go into what those other steps are, I wanna get this car in the air and I wanna show you the benefits of doing this mod to this Italian supercar. All right, first time Lambo's on the lift. Maintain your composure. Don't be nervous. What was that? All right, do a little shake test. That's okay. And up she goes. Okay, that wasn't so hard. All right, so now that we're underneath the car, don't worry about the image. It's a little bit stretched out. Had to use my super wide angle lens. This is the engine right here, this long thing. And uh, that goes into the transmission. Transmission is actually in front of the engine and it sits with you in the passenger compartment. It's a little bit weird. Uh, it's the reason why you don't sit forward. You sit a little bit to the side uh, if you're driving this car. So uh, that transmission goes into a torque tube and the torque tube is a lot like the torque tube in a Corvette or uh, Aston Martin or something like that. It's basically just a drive shaft inside a tube that has a bearing and then that goes all the way up to the front differential. And the front differential has two axles going out to the front wheels. Now the way this works, there is no center differential, but there is a viscous coupling and that happens in the front differential, I believe. I could be wrong about that. Some of you will uh, let me know in the comments if that's true or not. Now what the viscous coupling does is it gives the front tires some grip when the rear tires see a little bit of slip. Now, what this car is, is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive car, and it has something called lift-off oversteer, meaning that if you overcook it on a turn and you let off the throttle and that upsets the weight balance, this tends to oversteer, meaning the rear tends to get away from you. This slides out. What the front drivetrain does is it gets the car back in line by giving it some front-wheel drive grip. So if we take out the front-wheel drive component of this, does that mean the car is gonna be less stable? Well, no, not really, not at all, actually. The car likes to be rear-wheel drive. These cars handle phenomenally when they're rear-wheel drive, and all the owners that have done this mod say that they would never, ever go back. Not to mention that we save a lot of weight from the front of this car, the front and the middle of this car, meaning that this car is gonna be lighter, it's gonna be faster. And the big benefit of this, and the reason why I actually have to do this, are the wheels. Let me show you what I mean. Now the viscous coupling, instead of a clutch driven or a gear driven coupling, actually uses fluid to manage the connection between rear wheel drive and front wheel drive. But it only works when a few things are left alone, things that have definitely been modified on this car. So when Lamborghini originally designed the all wheel drive system for this car, and essentially the Diablo before it, they assumed a few things. The first of which is that the owners would not be able to handle all the power that this V12 makes. And the second of which is that the tire sizes would stay the same. This was built with the stock tire size in mind. This is not the stock tire size, and that presents a really big problem because the fronts are 19 inches in diameter. The rears are 20 inches in diameter. And remember that viscous coupling that I was talking about? Yeah, here's what's gonna happen to that when I actually try to drive the car in all-wheel drive mode. Pretty quiet. So when I put it into a gear, you can see that all four wheels are turning. However, the front tires are turning at a different rate than the rear tires. And that presents a problem because that viscous coupling, when it's given some load, when this car is actually on the ground, that viscous coupling will heat up and eventually the entire differential fails. And seeing as how this car can handle some pretty high top speeds. What that 
essentially means is that this thing is on its last legs. So in order for me not to have my Lamborghini leave me on the side of the road, I bought a kit. This is the Reed Performance two-wheel drive conversion kit for the Lamborghini Murcielago, the LP640, LP670, and the Reventon. In case a person with a $2 million car wants to make it a little more exciting. This kit is very well made, actually. Uh, this is aluminum. It looks like it was CNC'd. Um, everything looks very high quality. It has Reed Performance right here, and it has a cool little bull uh, logo right here, just in case you forgot what car it's going on. What it consists of is this. This is a transmission mount, and these stub axles. These are made of titanium, and they really don't weigh anything. So it's really quite simple. This goes in here, that goes on the bottom of the car, and this keeps the transmission from flopping up and down. Because a lot of people, when they do these conversions, they basically leave all this stuff out. They just delete everything. They take the torque tube out, they take the front differential out, and the only thing holding that transmission and engine in place are the engine mounts, which are all the way in the back of the car. So when you actually have some torque applied to the engine, then the transmission ends up hitting the frame, and that is no good. So this makes everything nice and rigid. This keeps everything where it's supposed to be, and it makes a car a lot more usable and livable and more fun. So without further ado, let's get my hands dirty and get to work. All right, let's check out what we did. And as you can see, there's nothing here. There's no torque tube, no differential, and no drive shaft, which gives us a lot of room to check out stuff like this steering rack. So when I originally got this car, I saw that the steering rack was weeping a little bit, but now that I have everything off, I realize that the steering rack itself is okay. It's actually in really good shape. It might just be one of the lines uh, right here. You can see that it might be uh, weeping a little bit from here or here. I'll just have to monitor this. And now I can because I have so much more room for activities. But not only the steering rack, I can get to the uh, hydraulic lines here, I can get to the sway bar, and I can get to the brake lines, which look like they're in great shape. They're not corroded or anything, which would have been bad because they're probably very expensive. But coming down here, uh, we see what we did. So this is what's gonna get covered up by the rear-wheel drive conversion, but here's what happens if you don't get this kit. And uh, it's, it's not very good. So this right here, 
is, well, there's a small gap in between the transmission and the frame. And what happens when you lower this down, let's lower this down a bit, with no support on the transmission, you can see the transmission is lying on top of the frame. So when the engine torques, then it just smashes the transmission to this frame, creating a lot of clunking, and it's just no good for anybody. So all we have to do is install this guy right here, like that, and then we put the mount on, and then we're done. Actually, no, we're not done. There's another really easy step that I think I'm forgetting. The titanium stub axles. And all you have to do is put them right in back here and they are installed. That was super easy. And then you just put a nut on here and torque it to spec. But on the floor is what I took out. Here is the differential and this is pretty heavy. I mean, if you're not ready for this, uh, this might land on your head. So just be careful if you're taking this off, uh, make sure that uh, you have some kind of uh, grasp on it because it can come down and it, it is quite heavy. So this is a differential. This is the torque tube and here are the axles. The axles gave me a little bit of issue because they have these bolts which are uh, Allen key and this one, the Allen key completely stripped out. So it took me about two hours to get this thing out. And what I did was I used a chisel and I just hit it until it, uh, well, it broke free. And I got that tip from uh, Mercedes source on YouTube. So shout out to him. But everything here is weight reduction. There's about 150 pounds we're removing from this car, which makes the car, well, it's already 4,000 pounds, but makes this car more fun, more lively, and the rear wheel drive is just gonna make it more fun to drive. So let's get on with it. Let's install that rear wheel drive kit and let's see if it works. Fingers crossed. Oh, geez, that's dirty. moment of truth. Let's see if everything works. I don't see why it shouldn't, but let's try anyway. It's just too quiet. I don't know. It's just something about it. It just doesn't make enough noise. I can't say that with a straight face. All right, here's a fruit of our labor. Put it into first and... <laughs> oh yeah, rear wheel drive. Oh, I can't wait to get this thing on the road. Let's get the wheel speed up a little bit. That's third. Speedometer works. Did you guys hear that? Let's see what she'll do in fifth. It's not six, but... Will it even start yet? There we go. Enough of that. <laughs>
All right, so this thing is now rear wheel drive. We subtracted about 150 pounds and it sounds amazing and hopefully it's gonna drive amazing. In the next few episodes, I'm gonna make sure that this is ready to do a test drive. Now, we're not gonna put the interior back in, that's gonna get sent out. And we're also not gonna do some other odds and ends, probably the bumper's not gonna go back on. But I'd love to get this up to a standard where I can just sit in a seat, I can buckle my seatbelt and go for a drive just down the street just to see if everything in the drivetrain is working as it should. And that includes getting stuff like the mirrors because mirrors are sort of important, especially on a car that's this wide and has this big of a blind spot. So that is gonna be it for today's episode. I wanna give a big shout out to Reperformance. That two wheel drive kit is top notch. Uh, the install couldn't have gone better. And uh, they have a lot of stuff, not only for the Murcielago, but for the Gallardo and uh, other Lamborghinis as well. So check them out in the link in the description below. But until next time, this is me reminding you guys that on cars like this that now have some weight reduction and hopefully some better driving in the future. And also I should probably wear gloves when working on these cars. You guys need to wrench every day.